review is the ERISA legislation. And we have this evening Catherine Bray from the May Institute. She's going to explain to you about the health care premium assistance plan that um, helps people that have mass health access private insurance. Okay? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Catherine Bray. I'm the director of marketing for the May Institute. Um, the May Institute is a program that serves children and adults with autism, brain injury, and other local disabilities um, throughout the country. We serve about 22,000 consumers a year. Okay, can you hear me now? Is that better? Um, I'm just curious, are most of you parents or educators in here? How many of you are parents? Okay, great. And educators? Okay, great. So, ARICA um, is a law that was passed. You guys have the flyer. It's teeny tiny, I'm sorry. Okay, great. So, ARICA is a law that was passed in January of 2011. Um, it is an act relative to insurance coverage for autism. So, this is unique to the state of Massachusetts. Uh, Massachusetts worked really hard, looked at other states, and came up with this really, really great autism program. Um, the May Institute was very involved in the development of the law and also how to implement this in the community. So we looked at community resources, kids, staffing, um, sort of, you know, credentialing for staff, how it's going to be implemented. And we also worked really hard with insurance companies to talk about what the service delivery of this ARICA legislation would look like. Can you guys still hear me? No, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm trying to interpret. I, I, okay. Am I not talking loud enough? You're not talking louder than here. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll try really hard. So what's unique about this law and what's different from what services you're being provided in the school is that this is a medically based service for your child with autism. So the school district is providing educational based services. This law is medical based. So it's two separate programs for your child on the spectrum. Okay? So the law is defined autism as a you know, standard ASD diagnosis. Autism is a spectrum, so we have all different kind of kids that fit into the spectrum. Ch children with PDD, NOS, Asperger's, and a, and a standard autism diagnosis fall into this category. So those are the children who qualify for the ARICA law. So anyone have any questions about that? To qualify for this law, you do need, oh, okay. What do you mean, um, what kind of medical stuff? So it's, it's a medical-based service versus an educational-based service. So it's, you know, an educational part of your IEP that is delivered by the educational system. This is delivered through a medical Absolutely. So would it mean it's a that you're able to access additional services through your through your health care insurance, right? But right. it's not to supplant, it's not to replace school-based services or anything that the district's required to do under your IEP. Right. It's in addition to and above that. So like physical therapy. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. So to qualify for this, you do have to have an autism diagnosis from a physician. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, what is, what's very unique about the way Massachusetts set up this law is that there's no age limit. So we're talking zero to adults, seniors, that can qualify for this. And there's also no cap on the amount that the insurance company is required to pay, financial cap. So typically you have a cap of whatever it is that your insurance puts on it. So there's no cap for this. There's no yearly cap. And there's no lifetime cap. So very unique for the state of Massachusetts that they did this. So think about that just in the lifespan of your child that has an ASD. I'm also a mother of a child that has an ASD, so I am living this every day just like you guys are, trying to access as many services as I can for my child. So no annual or lifetime limit. So that's really huge to think about. So the services that are covered, they're very specific about what services can be covered under this law. Pharmacy, so evidence-based medical necessity services. So again, this is the medical side of the treatment for your child, not the educational side. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Pharmacy, psychiatric, psychological, therapeutic, 
and habilitative or rehabilitative care, which is what we provide at the May Institute. We provide ABA therapy, home-based ABA therapy for children and adults with autism. Does everyone know what ABA is? Yeah. Everyone does? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I go to the same school that Dr. Lowe. I go to the main center. You do? Which one? I go to the main center in Rockland. That's my favorite school. Yeah. I love the Rockin' School. Yeah. It's a great school. I'm sorry. Can you just give me a definition of ABA? So ABA is a treatment methodology for autism. It's evidence-based applied behavioral analysis. It's a way to teach skills. You break down the skill in very small steps. Teach the skill. Maintain the skill. And generalize the skill into other areas. In the community, school, whatever the setting is that you. So you're working on social skills, language, academic, um, community inclusion programs, that type of stuff. Just a daily living, dressing. We're working on toothbrushing at my house. We've been working on it for two years. We're getting there. So that's it's um, very evidence-based, data-driven. You know, we're taking lots of data. We're looking at it, graphing it. A lot of people are looking at the data to make sure your child is making progress. So evidence-based programs is what this law is funding. Do you have any questions? I get very excited about this because I'm very passionate, so if I'm talking too fast, tell me to slow down, okay? So in the pamphlet, it kind of covers the pharmacy care, psychiatric, psychological, therapeutic, and then um, rehabilitative and rehabilitative care, which is what the ADA falls under. So who qualifies and what insurance companies qualify for Arika? So private insurance is what the law is saying has to fund this type of therapy. So if you have a private insurance, Tufts, Blue Cross, whatever your insurer is, um, they are now required to cover this benefit. There are a lot of stipulations in the law. The law does stipulate that a self-funded plan, if a company has a self-funded plan, they are not required to provide this service. Typically companies that have self-funded plans um, have staff of less than 300 people. So that's just something to kind of be aware of. Um, so they are not required. We have been collecting data, that's what we do, about the referrals that have come in. So about 60% of families who call actually have a self-funded plan. So they are automatically disqualified from the service. You, are, you can talk to your employer and ask if you can switch to the type of you know, different funding source for your insurance company. That's something you can talk to your human resources department about. So just kind of think about that. Most people don't know okay. if they have a self-funded or a company funded plan. Um, so like you said, Mass Health is not required to fund this program. But what Mass Health has done is they have the premium, premium assistance program. So families who have Mass Health can qualify based on income and how many children they have to purchase a private insurance product. So you can call the Mass Health number, it's actually in that packet, and talk to the caseworker. And um, Mass Health will actually provide assistance, financial assistance, so that you can purchase a private insurance plan that then qualifies you for the Eureka program. Does that make sense? Well, let me try to explain that a little bit more since my daughter has Mass Health, um, but she also has private insurance. So part of the reason that Mass Health, you know, all children that have a disability will qualify for Mass Health, but whether or not it's something that you have to pay for as a service will be income dependent, and it also depends on if you already have private insurance. You can't have two primary insurances, so you can have your regular, I think my husband has Blue Cross, and then, um, so we have Mass Health as a supplement, meaning whatever Mass Health doesn't cover for my daughter who has disabilities, um, whatever Blue Cross doesn't cover, then Mass Health kicks in after we've exhausted. So as an example is that um, my daughter needed a wheelchair. So the cost of the wheelchair is $5,000. So our, our insurance company, Blue Cross, limits your durable medical equipment allotment each calendar year to $1,500. So the $3,500 balance for the wheelchair was picked up by MassHealth because we have MassHealth as a supplement insurance. 
so for us, for a family that has, you know, a lot of different needs in the medical field and sort of with doctors and specialists, it was worth it for us to get Mass Health as a supplement. What some people don't know is that even if you have Mass Health as your primary insurance, that Mass Health has a program to assist people getting private insurance because what they're trying to do is to, to put some of that responsibility back on a private insurance company by paying the premium cost to buy that insurance directly. And if you have Mass Health as a supplement and um, depending on your income, Mass Health may also reimburse you for like our Blue Cross payments every month. So it's one of those you don't know what you don't know. People don't tell you that these types of benefits exist. So you want to call Mass Health if, you, if that is your primary insurance and you want to say, my child is eligible under the ERISA law, but that requires me to have private insurance. I want to know what opportunities Mass Health, what assistance you can give me to access private insurance. So, because we don't want people on Mass Health to say it's a great law, but we don't have access to it. Generally speaking, you don't because of the way that the law was written, but because of the policy within Mass Health to assist people to get private insurance, you may be able to get it. So it's one of those opportunities we want people to say, well, I, don't, I want to exhaust that opportunity. I want to know because if it does, it opens up the opportunity for your child to then get additional services. And again, this is all in addition to your IEP. It's not to replace your IEP, but you know, if the kid's on the spectrum, it can be something like a social skills group somewhere. It can be OT, PT. It can be additional ADA services in the home. So you obviously want to have you want to have knowledge about all of the opportunities and services that your child may be able to access, especially because this law does not have a cap on the amount. A lot of times when kids have disabilities, I know I have to keep sort of a watch on my private insurance for what my daughter's lifetime cap is for certain benefits, but this law does not have a cap. In fact, it says there shall be no cap. So if your child has ASD, it's an important thing to look at. And. Um, you explained it very well. And I think another thing to think about is, um, you know, sometimes mass health products are not easy to navigate. We all know that. Um, we have had several families that have navigated this process, purchased private insurance, and are now being served. So it does work. Um, they do have caseworkers there that are there to assist you. Um, so I encourage, you know, if you, I encourage you if you do have mass health to really look at the premium assistance program, call them, and just have a conversation with them about what your options are. Question? Yeah. Um, I had went to some of the other um, Eureka presentations by, I think, the women who helped write it and uh -huh. the department. Um, and they were saying, what about if you're a federal employee and you have uh, insurance? Like Blue Cross Blue Shield is saying that they're not covering it? They are covering it, yeah. So all Blue Cross Blue Shield is if, it's a, if it is a company funded program. If it is a self funded program, which is typically a company that has less than 300 employees. What if you're like a government um, So this is, this is how we know if you qualify for the service. What we tell families is to fill out an application packet. We have this wonderful person in our office who deals with insurance companies all day long, and she is the best advocate for you guys. So fill out the application. What we do is we actually start negotiating with your insurance company. We're going to find out if you're eligible. If you're eligible, then we're going to find out you know, we're going to start putting in requests for services and see what see what they give us as far as assessments and hours and all of that. So I really encourage you to just um, talk to your employer, see if it's a self-funded or a company-funded plan. What if that's impossible to talk to your employer? Okay. So this brings up a very interesting question. I work for the government. Right. I, there's no, right. There's no weeks. Right. 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 So this also goes back to your open enrollment period for your benefits, which is a great time to talk to your employer about what benefits you're eligible for. So most companies are open enrollment, I think for the federal government is actually coming up in June. Mm -hmm. um, it's either June or in January. So that's yeah, typically January. January. But still go and have a conversation with your HR department. Or, well, <laughs> no, I, I, I work for the DOG, I know. <laughs> so I would encourage you to fill out an application with your insurance information and let us help you with that so you don't I mean because it's a long process to try to figure that out so that's that's a resource that we do provide for families. Okay. where do we get that application so um in your packet there's a phone number for Ashley now you're from the main I would um say if I want to continue with ADA services to my son would I have to go through the main institute or I stick with who I already enrolled with 
you can talk to your provider if yeah. they have contracts with those insurance companies to do this. I'm not sure. Then you can, you know, go with that. Yep. So did you find her for each one? I did. Um, I just wanted to follow up on some of the questions. Um, because with Blue Cross Blue Shield Federal Nine, they won't cover ABA, but they'll cover like speech therapy or OT like, separately. Okay. Um, so if we, so that's our primary insurance. Right. If we um, got mass health for our son and secondary, can we then access Erica through this other method you were saying? Through the, the premium assistance. Yep. Yeah. Is that, a, um, or is that not possible because that's just the primary insurance? Typically, um, any. Okay. okay, you have private insurance? Yes. Okay, but they have, they're not subject to the ERISA law? Right, the federal plan and in the conference. Yeah, you so can't far. access it because okay. your primary insurance, it, what Mass Health Premium Assistance would do would, would get you access to private insurance, but you have already yeah. have your yeah. private insurance. Right. So they couldn't buy you a so second primary. It doesn't look like it, no. This is a federal government issue, I guess? Yeah. Um, the, yeah, I think <coughs> The only window that I think is left is that. Um, our provider who called the insurance company for us said that we could go to our employer and ask if they have opted in for an exemption because we're in Massachusetts. Absolutely. And Massachusetts right. has state law. Right. The federal law always is going to supersede the state law. Yeah. That's just the way it is. But you are in a situation because of the state you live in. A lot of the employers are not aware that this law has been passed. Okay. So that's. Yeah, so that's part of what we do. If you, if, you know, if you call Ashley, she's going to really advocate for you and talk talk to your insurance company. Each insurance company does have case management for this. Just to let you know, we work very closely with the Arika case managers um, for all of the insurance companies in the state. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, I find out that I have Blue Cross Blue Shield with self-funded plan. Is it self-funded plan? Yes. Okay. So I have no way to get it. If it's a self-funded plan, it's not qualified. So you can talk to your employer about, you know, if they are willing to switch to a company plan. They won't. They won't. Okay. So then they won't do it. They don't have to comply. That's the way the law is written. Yeah. Unfortunately. But they said that unless it's happening to the federal law, and they can do it in the law. Right. Right. But there are also other services through um, CBHI that do qualify for ABA therapy. And especially EI if you're under three, and it was if you have children over three. Um, but CBHI is for children that have an ASD and also either an emotional, psychological disorder as well. So it's a wraparound service that we provide as well. So that is separate from Arika, a separate from Mass Health. So uh, how can I accept to that program? So call Ashley. Call Ashley. Yep. And Ashley is very knowledgeable about, you know, what qualifies, what doesn't, that type of stuff. So she's a great resource. And she will, she doesn't call you or answer the phone that day. She will like get back to you. She's very prompt. So we're very happy to have her. Does that make sense with how I'm answering these questions? Okay. So like I said, you have to be referred. You have to have a diagnosis. Um, all of this is in the packet that I gave you. Ashley is our intake coordinator. She has the paperwork. She can email it to you or send it out to you if you need help with it. Filling out the paperwork, it is kind of long. That's a lot of interim questions. Then just call us and we'd be happy to help you with that. Are there any more questions? How long does it usually take us to fill out the application? It depends on the insurance company. Um, <laughs> you know what? We've been really, really pleased with how well um, the insurance companies have responded. So not that long. Fill out the packet, then we immediately, once we get your information, then we're going to start talking to these persons. Any other questions? Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you to Catherine for coming out again. I think it's really important that we try to find out as many opportunities that exist to access services. And you know, this law came into effect, I think it was a year ago, and we did one training. I think back in August or September at the Campbell Resource Center, but obviously reaching as many people as possible. So we'll put this information on our website too. And um, that's one thing we're trying to do. We, uh, 
we just put together a brochure so we're going to try to put that out at different locations like at the family resource centers and at different schools so that parents that don't have access to the internet will have some information about sped packs because obviously getting the word out since we don't have people's direct contact information it's important to sort of spread the word not only through the the videos online but also with regard to parent to parent so um, whatever you can do to let parents know about the information that we're trying to put out and also just that we're an additional resource and you know we're here for them if they want to come to the meetings that would be much appreciated so those are the two presentations for this evening.